every year in the church. We have a cycle in the liturgy. It begins with Advent time, which begins, by the way, next week, and it continues on to the end of the church year, to the end of time. And we hear in the Holy Scriptures chosen at this time of the year, reference to the end time, the end of all time, the end of the world, as we say. It is, a, it is of our faith, brothers and sisters, that Christ will come again at the end of time to judge the living and the dead. In other, in other words, to judge all human beings of all times and all places. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead. The book of Revelation speaks about the judgment in the form of the harvester. We saw the image of the angel with a sickle. You know what a sickle is? It's a, a harvesting instrument used to cut the grain, cut the grapes. The book of Revelation depicts, depicts the last judgment as a harvesting. God in Christ will harvest all the souls. In other words, there will be judgment. And uh, the good will be sent off into everlasting life and the wicked into everlasting punishment. In the gospel today, we hear Jesus speaking about the end time, speaking about the judgment. And people are trying to get him to tell them, when will this happen? When will this happen? He says there will be many signs, but he's not very clear. There will be a lot, there will be troubles, there will be wars. He says, he doesn't tell us when. He does not tell us when. There have always been Christians who thought they knew when Christ would come again. Some even sold all their goods, went up to the mountain to get ready and to wait, thinking that Christ was going to come the next day. They've always been wrong. No one has ever predicted the coming of Christ. And he doesn't want us to try to figure it out. He, gives, he tells us a few things, however, which are very important. The first thing he says, if somebody comes saying, I'm the one, don't believe them. Don't believe them. If someone comes proclaiming that he is the Savior, don't believe him. We won't need to be told. When Christ comes, it will be obvious to everyone. Christ will be there in glory. There will be no question in any mind that it is the end and that Christ is there in glory. So we are not to believe people who say, he's here or I am he. Well, what are we to do then, brothers and sisters? We are to be faithful. We are to be faithful, faithful to Christ, faithful to the vows of our baptism. That's the point. But we're also to be mindful of others. It, we in the church are called not only to hold firm, to be faithful, but also to do our best to spread the gospel. Spread the gospel. Jesus made that very clear. He wanted his disciples to proclaim the gospel to the ends of the earth. Our present Pope insists again and again on the importance of all of us doing what we can to spread the gospel. Just after reading the gospel, when it spoke about all the wars and troubles that were coming, we ended the God by saying, the gospel of the Lord, which means good news. Perhaps you were struck by that. After telling about all the terrible things that will happen at the end, we conclude by saying, the good news of the Lord, the gospel. It is good news for those 
who will have been faithful. It will be wonderful news when Christ is there as judge. It will be marvelous news. And for us who have been faithful, we will be overjoyed. Christ wants us to share the joy of his coming with all the world. That's why we must not just keep the faith to ourselves. Do our best that others may come to believe and may then be there for the joy of Christ's coming. I just want to say also that I'm happy to see the family of Michael Burt. I, when I first came here to St. Stephen's, Michael Burt was serving Mass every day most faithfully. And we offer this Mass for the repose of his soul. Please stand now.